Right, I've had another idea there actually. What I've done, I've taken this uh, clip off. What I've gone, I'm going to put it under, I'm going to clip it in so it's onto the piping like that. If you can see there, it's onto the piping, then I'm going to stick it down. If you look there, now it's holding the piping. Just let you see. There's a little, that, that, that hook's over, you just slide it in, then stick it on. Don't stick it on first like I just did, hook it over the pipe and then stick it down much much easier. Right we've got to make sure we got the we haven't got the piping too tight so I'm just going to give it a little bit of give there just to be sure. Now the piping then still has to come out of the printer and it can't go out this way so what I'm do is bring it down this way like that. Get a little square clip like this, stick it on the back, clip it onto here Stick it onto there, sorry, like that, and clip your piping through it. There you go. That's all the knot in place. If you see what I mean there. Now that's um, all put together. Now we've just got to see if it's going to work. Obviously, there's a lid sensor on the printer, but uh, I should right, the lid sensor is here. If you look there, there's that thing pointing down there goes into that hole down there. Now obviously with all the piping and everything in, this up here isn't long enough. So we have to make it longer. And all I've got is, I've got some paper, rolled it up into a cigarette shape with a, you know, hollow, put some salad tape around it to strengthen it, and I'm just going to shove it onto there. There. Put it onto there like that. Then what you have to do to make sure that this goes into that hole is as you bring the lid down, just hold it and guide it into the hole. I've missed it there, we'll try again. There, that's, that, that's guided into the hole. Now, there you go. It thinks that the, it thinks that the lid is closed now, you see. It will sit open that much, if you look. Nothing we can do about that. If you want to save the money from the CIS, you have to put up with an inch, with it being open an inch. Now, if you look, it's um, going through all its setup procedure now. So we know that the cartridges are recognised. We know that the lid's down, the sensor's down because it's starting to move about. All we've got to do now is wait for the printer to go through these um, setup procedures, like it would do even if you just put normal cartridges in. But once it's done that, we can see what to do. Now, if you look at the screen here. It's come up, everything's okay. It's wanting, uh, we have to choose our um, option, whatever we want to do. So let's do, uh, right, I've put some uh, instructions or something under the scanner. We will scan something in, now to put it up to the computer. The main thing is showing you that the uh, system works with the CIS, and as long as it doesn't matter whether it's from the computer or a scan, as long as it's printed, we know that everything's okay. So it's on copy on there, so we'll press OK. OK, OK, start. There we go. Let's see what happens. It started, going through its preparing and all that lot. Still going through it. But even if you put normal cartridges in, this will happen. It won't. It's not happening just because it's a CIS. Canon printers seem to be so slow. All we can do is watch and wait for it to go through its system, and we will be printing. Oh, it's like watching paint dry. I will say again though, this uh, length of time has got nothing to do with the fact that it's a CIS. If you had to put normal Canon cartridges in there, it would still do the same thing.
Right, at last, it started to do it. Watch it down here. And there's a scan coming out there. Absolutely perfect. Yep, absolutely perfect. Printing. There you go. Everything's gone fine there. As I say, this printer was the hardest one to get right out of all the cannons so far. But with a bit of uh, thinking and working out, we can get there. And that's the main thing. We don't want to be paying fortunes in ink cartridges when all it means is we've got to have the uh, printer open that little bit there. We can save a fortune on ink. I just want to tell you a couple of things just to make sure that it's pretty clear to you. Your bottles must be, without fail, on the same level. Don't have them higher. Don't forget your little, uh, let's go around there, your little air bungs. Make sure your little air bungs are in. If you leave those rubber bungs in without putting the air bungs in, the ink will not flow and it will not print. Right, as I packed up there, I just realised I've missed one thing off that you would like to know. Uh, you cut your printer thinks you put normal cartridges in, so it will monitor them as normal cartridges. So it's going to eventually say that one of them is empty. So, so let's say, for instance, it's saying your black is empty. Replace it. What you do, you go through your normal procedure so that the um, cartridges come out into the middle here, ready for you to um, replace the cartridges. They'll come out there. Now, say it's um, the black, that one there. All you have to do is clip it out, lift it a bit so the light goes off, wait a few seconds, clip it back in, and that's it. That cartridge will go back to full again. So that's how to uh, fool it into thinking that you've replaced the cartridge. I'm pretty sure that's it now. Thanks for watching.